Well, good afternoon. Oh, come on, Avid family. Good afternoon. How are y'all? Aren't you excited to be here? As Dr. Lee Vargas said, my name is Patrick Briggs. I have the privilege and honor of being your Avid Texas State Director. Any Texans in the room? Woo. I said, wait a minute, if I'm keynoting, y'all better show up. Thank you for doing so. Hey, follow me on Twitter. I am tweeting some great stuff. P Briggs 728, so guess when my birthday is. Uh, okay, so without any further ado, unless you'd like some more ado, I can give it to you. Let's just move on. You ready? Let's go. All right, so here is our essential question for this session. Love essential questions. My avid folks, you know what essential questions are. Do you remember back when you were a school teacher or if you're currently in the classroom, you probably write your objective on the board. Is that correct? Do you write an objective or a learning standard on the board? Okay, I'm from the Black Baptist Church. I need a little call and response here. Do you write your objective or learning standard on the board? Oh, ha ha. Thank you. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you do that? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> You're being compliant with an administrative directive. It has zero to do with children learning. <laughs> I would write on the board. I meant to do that, by the way. I would write on the board. The students will be able to understand and comprehend the strategic processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Then I'd ask a 12-year-old person, so what are we supposed to do today? They'd look at me and say, I have no idea. You write that up there every day. <laughs> and what I understood was I was being compliant with an administrative directive. Now, I want you to keep your job and keep getting paid. So if that's what you're supposed to do, do that. But there's nothing that says you can't turn that into an essential question. Here is ours. How can I, talking about us, how can we achieve the mission of our district and our school by partnering for success at this conference? So we'll come back to that. AVID's mission. I had a great job in Cypress Fairbanks ISD, a cushy great job. Got to work with children every day. I left that job to come and work for AVID in 2007 because that mission that you see on the screen is my mantra. I live and breathe that. That's why I get out of bed every day, because I believe we must do that for the children. Now, when you look at that mission, close the achievement gap. I hate that term. I love the mission. <laughs> but the term achievement gap, I hate it, because usually that is a label this country slaps on people like me. I can give you 50 reasons why statistically I should be dead or in prison. I had a much better chance statistically at both of those. I could spend the rest of this afternoon telling you all the things about me growing up that says, Patrick, you shouldn't have had several college degrees and working on another one. So where's my achievement gap? I want it. This country promised it to me. It doesn't exist. See, what we have in this country are two gaps that create it. The two gaps that create the achievement gap, number one, the opportunity gap. Who has the opportunity to learn at high levels? Who has the opportunity to experience rigorous coursework? Who has the opportunity to be made college and career ready? That's why I love AVID, because we say that, notice that in the, in the, in the mission, all students, when you have the AVID college readiness system, the opportunity gap. Because I had great teachers like you, great educators like you, you closed my opportunity gap because you gave me access to your most rigorous courses. You allowed me to take honors and AP and IB and dual credit when I didn't look like the kid who should have been in those courses. When I didn't fit the cookie cutter mold, they didn't open my cumulative folder and say, baby, no. <laughs> no, we've seen your cum folder. No, great educators like you gave me that opportunity. So when I got to Prairie View A&M University, anyone? Okay, I heard some whoops. Not A&M, 
Prairie View A&M. Anyone? Ah! Do that again. P-V-U. Okay, we'll stop. I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> so when I got to Prairie View A&M University and I got in that English class, English 101, college English, the professor said, okay, write me a paper. I need APA citations, I need an annotated bibliography, and I need this, that, and the other. I looked at that professor and I said, <coughs> bruh, I got you. Because great teachers like you gave me the opportunity to experience that in high school. You made sure I was college ready. Because in that class with me at Prairie View were students who raised their hand and said, uh, professor, where are the worksheets? I can hunt and find. I'm a teacher pleaser. I can fill in the blank. But professor, what you're asking me to do, nobody ever gave me the opportunity to do anything like that. And they started dropping like flies. Those kids were much more intelligent than I will ever be. Great educators like you <laughs> made sure I had that opportunity when I was with you in your K through 12 system. The second gap that creates the achievement gap is the expectation gap. Who do we expect to be college and career ready? Who do we expect to go on and do great things? Not y'all, let me take you back to me. <laughs> I can remember, if you had come to my school before Avid, and I let you see one class, I said, you know what, come on, you a visitor today, come on in here. We don't have a lot of time, let me walk you into AP Calculus. You would have looked at me and said, wow, Patrick, those kids are on the ball, those kids are doing great things. Man, those kids are sharp. But then you would have looked at me and you would have said, Patrick, is your school 100% white and Asian? We weren't. But see, we were allowing that to happen. See, culture, a great definition of culture of a campus, culture, what do you allow? Because had we said, oh, we have one, one class we're going to go to, let's go to in-school suspension, you'd have walked out of there saying, oh, mm, it's a hot mess. But Patrick, based on the kids in this in-school suspension room, are you running a charter school for boys of color? We weren't. See, we were allowing that. And you see, the kids in those two different classes had different opportunities. And the kids in those two different classes had different expectations. We were creating the achievement gap because we had a huge opportunity gap and we had a huge expectation gap. I remember before AVID when I was in a middle school, <laughs> I had one section of Algebra I for eighth graders. And if you couldn't do two pirouettes and a flip and land in a split, you couldn't get in. <laughs> no, baby, I've seen your cum folder, no. But think about it, is there any scenario where that kid now takes calculus as a senior in high school? No. <laughs> so what I was really saying to that child is, you will never take calculus, ever. You're not good enough. I've seen your cum folder, and I'm deciding that for you while you're 12, good luck. And I have then played with the trajectory of the rest of that kid's life. And it's a tale of $2. I got $2 here. Don't get excited, they're leaving with me. I know a lot of times you go to conferences and they say, ooh, I got $2, ah! no, you're with me, $2. <laughs> now. How much is this dollar worth? Let's go with a dollar. <laughs> well, how much is this one worth? A dollar. So what I'm hearing you tell me is that these two dollars have the same value and they have the same worth. Now, let me take this one Ball it up. Now, how much is this one worth? A dollar. How much is this one worth? 
So what I'm hearing you tell me is that they have the same value and the same worth. Now, let me take this one and drop it on the ground. Let me step on it. Let me abuse it. Let me treat it like it's not worth anything. Let me spit on it. Now, how much is this one worth? How much is this one worth? So what I'm hearing you tell me is that they have the same value and the same worth. Now, which one of them are you going to give the opportunity and which one do you expect to get into Coke Machine University? Mm -hmm. See, there's no achievement gap between these two dollars. You told me they have the same value and the same worth. <laughs> but see, one of them is going to get several opportunities to get in that Coke machine. Come on, baby, I need this Diet Coke. Uh-uh, you going in there. I might feed him in four, five times before I even think about this here one. You're not worth it. I'm not going to even try. I might even smooth out a corner on this one. Come on, baby, I got to have that caffeine. You going in this machine. I'm going to work with this one for quite a while because I'm giving him the opportunity that that one doesn't have. And I'm giving him the expectation that that one doesn't have. But this here one should have the opportunity and we should expect him to get in the Coke Machine University. But the only way to do that is to do the equity work. Because this here one, I might have to unroll him. <laughs> I might have to straighten out his corners. I might have to build a relationship. I love you and I got to have that Diet Coke. Might put him over my knee and smooth him out. I might have to do a whole lot of work, but if I do that, great teachers did that for me. They saw me for that wrinkled up, spit on, stepped on dollar and said, Patrick, you can go to college. And I expect you to go and I'm giving you the opportunity to go. Because I know statistically where I would be if it wasn't for great educators who saw me as that wrinkled up, balled up, stepped on, spit on dollar and treated me with the expectations and didn't give me the opportunity that this one has because I had the same value and the same worth. Equality. I'm seeing a picture of equality on the screen. Everybody gets the same thing. That was me as that hot mess first year teacher. It was a hot mess. I'm talking about me, not y'all. Didn't have Avid back then. Now, Look at brother number one on the left. <laughs> Yay, I can see the game. The objective on the board was the students will be able to watch a baseball game. <laughs> brother number two in the middle. Yay, I can see the game. I've achieved the objective for today. Brother number three on the right. I knew he was going to be looking at the fence when I gave him the box. But of course, I have to be fair. I have to be equal. I have to treat all my students the same. Please. No other profession on this planet does that. Let's pretend I worked, I worked for equal doctor's office. Equal doctor's office, where we treat everybody equally. <laughs> you come in with Ebola. You come in with a broke leg. And you come in with a cut on your arm. Well, this is equal doctor's office where we're fair. So I have to treat everybody the same, so I've got an Ebola case, a broken leg, and a cut. Well, everybody gets a Band-Aid. It's going to work out for my Mr. Cut. Two of y'all going to be looking at the fence. What if I work for Equal Law Office? We treat everybody the same here at Equal Law Office. You come in on a murder trial and got Ebola. He's in trouble. <laughs> you come in on a robbery. You come in for a speeding ticket. Well, this is equal law office where we have to treat everybody the same to be fair. See, fair and equal hate each other. They hate it. They are enemies. 
Because, see, when I'm equal, there will always be a level of failure. That's how the system is designed. So what I had to do in my AVID training made me so much of a better educator because then I said, we need to look at equity. What does everybody need to be successful? And I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that if I had a brother up here in a wheelchair and we needed to get to the second floor, we'd let him take the elevator and everybody else takes the stairs. Cuz we have equity and we're looking at an equal outcome. Everybody's successful. I used to do stupid stuff when I was a hot mess first year teacher. It was over a quarter of a century ago. It was over a quarter of a century ago. Some of y'all are looking at well, how old are you? Let's just put it like this. The secret, black folks, you know, cocoa butter. So explain that later. I used to do stupid stuff like, oh, you get a pass from the nurse because you need to take your insulin shot, your diabetic. Oh, no, not in this class. <laughs> you ain't special. Mm -mm. Everybody else in here has a pancreas that makes insulin. You better tell your pancreas to make insulin and quit acting like a fool in here. That's an exaggeration, but it is stupid stuff like that. Because when you're equal, there will always be a level of failure. Equity says everybody's going to be successful, but you might have to unroll some dollars. <laughs> you might have to straighten out some dollars. Because equity is not equal. Equity says... I need to get all of my kids to the same place. Not y'all, but for my school, it was they need to pass a state test. <laughs> How do I get 1,600 kids to pass the same test? I have to do the equity work. Equity. <laughs> Let's pretend I'm on a desert island. Don't worry about how I got here. I'm on the island. You're with me? With me on this desert island is a little two-year-old boy. You see the two-year-old boy right here? If y'all see him, we're in trouble. But I'm glad you're with me. Little two-year-old boy over here on the island, a hundred-year-old woman is over here. <laughs> the three of us have been dropped on this island, and they treated us equally. They said, each of you will get a bottle of water, survive for 10 days. Let's see how that works out when we're treated equally. <laughs> Day one. I sit under a shady coconut tree. I don't move, I don't talk. She sits under a shady coconut tree. She doesn't move, she doesn't talk. Little two-year-old boy, he drinks all his water on the first day and starts running around the island chasing crabs. At the end of day one, she and I look at each other and say, he ain't gonna make it. And we know this with nine days to go. Day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day seven. She's now out of water. He's been out for seven days. At the end of day seven, she and I look at each other. He ain't gonna make it. I look at her and say, sister, neither are you. And I know this with three days to go. Day eight, day nine, day 10, day 10, the ship is here, the ship is here, the ship is here for me. And two people who didn't make it, because we were treated equally. <laughs> And so I get on the ship, and the captain says, Patrick, where's the little boy? Catch my pronoun. He was two. He drank all his water on the first day. He ran around the island chasing crabs. He didn't ration his water. He doesn't bring a pen to class. He won't bring his pencil. He doesn't do his homework. He won't bring a binder. He won't come in dress code. His mom won't come to the yard. All of the reasons I allowed him to die and slept at night because there was nothing I could do. So where's the hundred-year-old woman? Catch my pronoun. She was a hundred. She ran out of water on the seventh day. She was having some issues. She had some medical problems. She won't do her homework. She won't come with a backpack. She won't do this. She won't do that. She won't do all of the reasons I allowed her to die and slept at night because I treated them equally. See, equity on this island would have been day one, me sizing up the situation and saying, okay, if I do nothing, two people ain't going to be with me on the 10th on the day. 
So day one, I'm going to build a relationship with this kid. Relational capacity. Ooh, if I had another two hours. Relational capacity. Building a great relationship with this kid so he'll do anything in the world for me. Solely based on our relationship. Think about it. All of y'all as great educators, that's why you're here. All of you all as great educators, you have all taught a kid who would do anything in the world for you. Never caused you any problems, got solid grades, did all his work. That same kid left your second period, went to third period, and acted like a fool. Let's keep it real. Does that child change in the five minutes between our two classes? No, what changes is the relationship between that kid and the significant adult in the other room. So if I built relational capacity so that I could talk to him and teach him how teaching changes behavior, punishment will never do it. Punishment is not designed. See, I punish them on equal island. Think about it. You ever had a kid go to in-school suspension and come out fixed? <laughs> it will never happen, by the way. You ever had a kid come out of in-school suspension and say, oh, miss, I found Jesus in there. I'll never do it again. Please. It's a punishment. It will never change behavior. I can't change behavior when the problem is the relational capacity. I can't do it. I can punish. <laughs> I can say, baby, you going home for three days, you suspend it. But he's coming back. What you going to do? Work on relational capacity or write him up again, but the conjunction there is an or. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm getting a signal. Thank you, sister. All right. I have more than two minutes. I got like 10. Can you hang in with me for 10 more minutes? All right, come on now. Go ahead and bring the uh, slides back up for me. Equity is not equal. See, if I did equity island, equity, day one, I would have built a relationship with the kid so he would do anything in the world for me. Because, see, that's the difference between that kid saying, I say, can you give me your water? Let me hold your water for you. We didn't have a relationship. He would have been like, no, you can't have my water. You ain't my daddy, huh? Build a relationship with him. Hey, can I hold your water and ration it for you? See, relational capacity gets him to say, yeah, yeah, you can hold my water. You can hold it. That kid is now going to survive solely based on our relationship. If I did that type of work and checked on her, notice I'm not doing the same thing for each one. I'm giving them what they need to be successful. If I did all that for 10 days, all three of us would have walked on that ship if that's the goal. <laughs> so now we look at my area, African-American male achievement, because as an African-American male, <laughs> I know it was great educators who closed my opportunity and expectation gap. But what you're seeing on the screen there, that's the current state of graduation from high school. Black boys. You can see the maroon state. Less than half of the black boys finish high school. The red states, less than 60%. Over half, between 50 and 60%. Currently, the light green states, less than 70, but more than 60. The dark green states, that's the only states where over 70% of the black boys finish high school. So I always like to say, in Montana, he did finish. <laughs> and in Maine, he finished too. But when we look at this, and we start to see what we call the achievement gap, <laughs> Latino males, more green, white males. Hmm. <laughs> Go back. Black males graduating high school. Latino males, white males. <laughs> Woo, I wish I had all day. Because you know what the number one killer of, of young black males? Murder. What's the number one killer of young black females? AIDS. Some of y'all are like, is AIDS still around? Yes, it is. I'm well aware of it, yes. <laughs> because I know that's the number one killer of my young sisters. Woo, I'm not going to get on my soapbox today. Let's move on. Because <laughs> recently, October 16th, we released the graduation rate for the United States. 83% of the kids in this country finish high school now. Woo! <laughs> that was big news. All-time high. Y'all know me through my equity lens. 
That means 17% didn't. <laughs> now, with 4 million ninth graders in this country, and that means in four years, there's going to be 680,000 kids. See, when we put numbers to it, we're talking about children. We're talking about about 55 million school children. That means of all the kids sitting K through 12 now, that's 9.5 million of them. That's, that's larger than the population of our largest city. Y'all can't read this, can you? Let me break it down for you. <laughs> this looks at the level of education for everybody who's of working age. Less than a ninth grade education, that's about 4% of people walking this country. Went to high school but didn't finish, that's about 7%. High school and that's it, that's about a quarter. So we start to see the vast majority don't finish college. We in this room have a piece of paper that most Americans don't have. Not because we're special or better, we had some opportunities and some expectations. Break it down by race, much worse. Because there's only six things your babies can do when they leave you. Think about every child you're going to see on Monday morning. Every child you're going to see has this, these six opportunities waiting on them. There's only six things you can do on this planet when you finish with us. Everybody on this planet is currently doing one of those six. Everybody in China is doing one of those six. Everybody in Afghanistan is doing one of those six. Everybody who's ever lived on this planet is currently doing one of those six. Number one, you can go on to school, two-year college, four-year college, trade school, technical school, certificate program. Now, we look back at the statistics, we have a whole lot of kids. Number one, they didn't finish high school. So number one is off the table. But they still have five other options. Number two, you can get into the military. Can you get into the military in our country without finishing high school? Not in this country. Two options are gone, but they still have four other options. Number three, you can go to work. I have no problem with that. You're going to be making $2 million straight out of high school, legally, because that leads to number five. Number, th number four, <laughs> you can be unemployed. You can sit at home with mama and them. Not in my house, but I heard you can do that. Number five, prison. This country is the best in the world at number five. We have 5% of the world's population in this country. We have 25% of the world's prison population. No other country does it better than we do. We're the best at locking people up, but remember, that's a punishment. Its job is not to change behavior. And of course, death. So now you're saying, okay, Patrick, well, what's the solution? I am so glad you asked. Well, there it is. <laughs> All right, Abbott family. There's my Abbott family. Because now, when we talk about college readiness, we have the statistics. You have access to this. Of course, all my AVID family members, you can get this straight off my AVID for your district. College persistence, where are they now? Two years, three years, four years, five years after leaving you. <laughs> it's available to you. Now, those of you who don't have AVID, first question is, why not? Second one is, look at what we're doing for kids. Our kids are enrolling in college at much higher rates than the nation. This is, the yellow line is the kids who enrolled straight out of high school, the AVID children, AVID seniors graduating. You can see that continues to go up and up and up and up and up. The blue line, those are the ones that enrolled sometime in that first year. And you can see AVID kids are enrolling at much higher rates than the nation. Now remember, who are our AVID kids? I love that. When we look at this, eight in 10 of our kids are enrolling in college at least five years after high school graduation. And that trend is going to continue over 80% of our kids. Because when we look at the nation, what about kids going from freshman year of college to second year, sophomore year of college? Avid kids are blowing the water out of the rest of the nation. But remember, your avid kids are little Patricks. Vast majority underrepresented ethnic group, vast majority low income, vast majority parents have no college experience. And if we go back, they are blowing the water out of the other children who didn't have access to the AVID college readiness system. You heard me talk about Algebra 1 a few minutes ago. 
you offer Algebra 1 at your at middle school, and you got 100% of your kids passing the EOC, and this is Avid Kids, would you stand up? Look at that. Our kids can do it. Thank you. Is my Plano, are my Plano folks in the room? All right, Plano folks. Y'all are offering AP to middle school kids. Hello. And they're making threes, fours, and fives on the AP test. Don't tell me what our kids can't do when you give them the opportunity and you have the expectation that they do that. And what you're giving them is a system of rigor plus support. Because rigor without support is cruel. Support without rigor, that's just a waste of potential. In AVID, we give kids our real world tools and experiences. We build that community and those relationships. So, as I get ready to close, Urshas, come forward. Some of y'all caught that, let's move on. There's another one, black folks, explain that to your neighbor. You, and I saw a lot of you looking at your programs and the long sheet, you got about 83, over 80 different breakout sessions from which to choose. Now, we're not running 83 of them all the time. It's about 20 of them running each time. So make sure that you realize today you're gonna have two opportunities. This is not Summer Institute. Institute is where you're institutionalized, where we lock you in one strand. You know. No, this, <laughs> It's a true conference. You pick and choose where you want to go every 90 minutes. So you'll have two opportunities today, right after this session. You'll have four on uh, tomorrow and two on Saturday. Three general sessions, one each day. That You're at the one today. Our brother Jaime is going to be here. He's an educational evangelist for Google. I was like, oh, evangelist, come on now. <laughs> Y'all going to have me shouting in here tomorrow. And we got a great breakfast with uh, Brother Craig McKinney and our AVID students. Now, great stuff is happening in every room. So the best way to make the most out of this conference, spread the wealth. If you're here with more than one person from your school, make sure you're going to different things. Also have a second choice, because a lot of them are going to be very popular, and we are going to close the door on you. So have a second choice. Now, how to make the most of this conference? Attend the sessions. Somebody paying for you to be here. I love Avid, but we ain't free. So uh, don't get upset. If you in the hallway during one of those sessions and I pull out my Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg glasses, you know when, when somebody on The View says something Whoopi don't like, she give them one of these here. So if I see you in the hallway during one of those sessions, I'm gonna give you one of these here. And you know what I'm thinking. And I, and I jest there, and the reason I say that because I know the 83 people we have presenting these sessions are some of the best people and researchers on the planet. They are gonna give you a lot of information to go back and change the trajectory of the rest of kids' lives. Go ahead and put the slides back up as I close. So we have our essential question. You know what to do. What I want to say to you is you heard me say, we at Avid changed the trajectory of the rest of kids' lives. But then it hit me recently on Facebook, because after doing this job as a teacher for over a quarter of a century, now I'm friends with some of the kids I used to teach. <laughs> and they post pictures of their kids. And they're living much better than I am. Like, wait a minute, I taught you, you make more money, have a bigger house than me. <laughs> and look at your beautiful kids. And what I caught on that time, which changed me. I said, Patrick, we in AVID, we changed the trajectory of the lives of children who have not been born yet. You as a teacher have that much power. We're the most powerful people on the planet. We can control the trajectory of the rest of a kid's life and we change the trajectory of the lives of children who have yet to be born. I know you don't take that lightly. Thank y'all for having me. Follow me on Twitter. I'm tweeting some good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do for kids. Thank you for what you do for kids. Thank you for what you do for kids. We love you.